there, that's it. Oh, wait, it's dark. Why is it dark? No, no, because we do this. Yes. Oh, let there be light. Hi. Yes. Hi. It's Alice and Argram in the living room again. Mm, we are loving the crushed ice maker in the new fridge. Mm. This is hot. A&W root beer. A&W. And they make a diet root beer. Oh, that's good. Hi. Hi. It's Friday. Hey, Barb. Hey, Barb, did you get my email? I was like, can I move the, the Zoom call on Monday? Everything. Um, it's, um, I know, I'm like going, can I move this? Can I move that? I mean, I, it's like, it's like I have a real job. It's like, can you go here? I have to go here. I have to go there. It's like I have to, I have to reschedule things. I know who'd have thought that I would be this busy. I'd like reading to you. I got a show on the 24th. I'm like, ah, what is happening? Um, it's Friday. It's Friday. It is Friday. And it's the, the 28th. Um, so uh, yesterday was Just Because Day, which I kind of like. Today is National Red Wine Day. Mmm. Um, I had some Bordeaux. Some Bordeaux from France last night. F the French really make the good red wine. Oh, they do well in Napa, California, too. But wow. Um, it is. Na and red wine's good for you. It's got like, um, oh, I forget what. But, but there's a grape juice thing you can get where they have the, whatever, the flavonoids, the chemicals in the grape skin that do things for your circulation and for you that are in wine you can get for the, the thing. Um, so red wine. It is also National Power Rangers Day. Power Rangers! I remember Power Rangers. They were very cute. Um, National Bow Tie Day. Well, I don't have a shirt to warrant a bow tie. I guess I have this. I have this. I like bow ties. It's national if you have a bow tie. Today's a day to wear it. Um, it is National Bridge. A Rainbow Bridge. Rainbow Bridge Remembrance Day. I went over to Rainbow Bridge. Wah. That's, that's like our, our, all our pets, like our, well, I have a, I have a cushion, I did have, where did I put it? Is it still, is it here? No, I don't know. Oh, it's over here. Speaking of Rainbow Bridge, come here. This is, um, Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter, our very, very, very old cat. I live to be like 21. Um, but Hannibal was so cute, and, you know, Charlotte Stewart, Charlotte, who is our Miss Beetle, she makes, um, beetle bags. She makes bags and she makes pillows and she made this pillow a memorial pillow of our Katie Hannibal. And look, he's looking at the little bird. He's looking at the little bird. How cute is that? So she made that. So yes, yeah, so she went over there. So then, oh my God, it's so hot. I have, I have air in here. I should do the fan. I didn't do the big fan. I didn't put the big fan on. I should have. But I have, I have drinks and I have, well, okay. It's national cherry turnover day. I do not have any cherry turnovers, but I do have reasonable facsimile thereof. What do I have? I have a Trader Joe's cherry, cherry pomegranate, um, pop tart. It's a, and it's organic. It's not like a regular pop. It's, oh, it's good for you. It's, it's a Trader Joe's pop tart, but, um, it's cherries and pomegranates. And I actually toasted it. Actually, it's like blazing hot. I'm going to have to be like careful eating this here. Wait. Oh. Ah! Oh, and it has cherries and pomegranate. It's delicious. Mmm. All right. Oh, snap. Oh. Oh, that counts. Thank you. Oh. I do like cherry. Like we had cherry popsicle day. I like cherry pie. My cherry turnovers. I like the Trader Joe's cherry pop tarts. I do like cherry. Cherry's good. Cherry's good flavor. All right, I'm gonna look at this. I found this orange bonnet. It's very nice, it's very orange. And I looked down. Do I have an orange? I don't think I have an orange blouse. Halloween's coming. I should get an orange blouse. Um, so I put on my yellow blouse. I was gonna do the yellow bonnet, and I went, oh, look at the orange bonnet with the yellow. So I'm going with the orange bonnet with the yellow. Yay. Mm. Salad. Yes, and salad is good for you. I'm going to get some salad later, probably. All right, what are we doing? I declare. I'm <laughs> mm. what, how, will, so how will history title these daily? National, you're 91 years. Oh, what? 
I tried again. I can't. The crawl's going too fast. I don't even know. Wait, wait. I can't look back. National, your 91-year-old father keeps his house too warm. <laughs> that probably happens. Yes. A lot of people keep it hot. Um, yes. Totally. Um, I like it. I like it rather cool myself. Yes. Bob. Bob likes, you know. Um, yeah. He's like, oh, the air conditioner says it's cold in here. It's cold in here. I'm like, it's 80 degrees. It's a terrarium. Um, yeah. I'm more like, I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. Oh, and Bill, did you... Did I ever get a bee in my bonnet while filming? No, but Jonathan Gilbert, who played Willie, got a yellow jacket in his oh. mouth, and it stung him. Well, you know, we had these yellow jackets on the set, the little wasp. We had bees, we had wasps, we had yellow jackets, we had everything. And they were nasty, and they did sometimes sting, and we had to be careful because they always gathered around. We had, we had, a, we had the coffee urn and the tea thing and the chili thing, and we had lemonade, we had ice-cold lemonade. Oh, so good. And it was in this big urn, but of course... Duh, the yellow jackets, the things, the little tap from the big plastic, like, camp, you know, Coleman camper urn drink thing. It's, like, leaking. And the yellow jackets are, like, nee, lemonade. So we had to be very careful when you went to go get lemonade that you did not get stung. And Jonathan, if you recall, our dear Willie, um, did spend most of his time with his mouth open. And, and it was a character thing that worked really well. What? What, Miss Beetle? But he also did it in real life. He was notoriously just, I know, mouth breathing. And we'd go, Jonathan, stop breathing through your mouth. Breathe through your nose, for heaven's sakes. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. And he's like, no, no. And he wouldn't even, he was breathing. He said, no, I'm breathing through my nose. Then close your mouth. He was just walking up. We said, if you don't close your mouth. He was a little kid. He was one of those little kids. Oh, I said, if you don't close your mouth, one of these days, a bee will fly in. And you, 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 there'll be a disaster. And he was like, yeah, ha, 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 ha. And one day. Jonathan was walking around, oh, 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 and one of the yellow jackets, right, right, uh, right there, stung him right in the, oh, it's bad. I mean, thank heavens he wasn't, like, allergic, nothing horrible happened, but packs of ice and lots of crying and the set medic having to help him, and it was, it was very, it was very unpleasant. Okay, we kind of giggled a little bit, because he was okay, but he was very unhappy for hours, but he did stop walking around with his mouth open. He, he learned to breathe more through his nose and not go, ah, because the, the yellow jacket. Very dangerous. If you're in a place with yellow jackets, you kind of, you gotta be careful. You gotta close your mouth. So there you are. There you are. So, Prairie Prairie Lotus. I'm liking this Linda Sue Park lady. She's very good. So, Hannah, Hannah, our half Chinese Laura prototype, basically. Little Hannah, whose mom was Chinese, or actually, as she revealed, her mother was actually half Chinese, half Korean. Um, she, of course, here was born, little Hannah was, a, she says she was born in California, but she was living in Chinatown in L.A. and San Francisco, and then her mom dies, and her dad, her pa, they get in the covered wagon, and they go out, out to the prairie again to try to find somewhere to live, and well, they keep moving, because they keep picking on her for being half Chinese, so, um, they're now in South Dakota, in a town very like Dismet, with a teacher very like a, a Miss Beetle, and there's a justice of the peace, School board member who sounds remarkably like Paul Ingalls, complete with the blue eyes and the beard. Um, so yes, and she and she sews and everything, and they're trying to make it go. But things have been going pretty well. She got through day one by wearing a bonnet at school, and day two the teacher introduced her and was totally cool, it was fine. Second night, a bunch of parents freaked out. They had a school board meeting, but she went back. she went back, and a couple people like weren't there, wouldn't sit next to her, but she's back in school, and so far, so good. However, she went to this whole thing where they were copying all this trouble. They were copying out poems, and she copied out that favorite poem that she reminded her of her mom, and um, Crunch, uh, someone has stolen her poem, and she knows she's in trouble. It's in her little penmanship paper. So. Hannah immediately searched under and around her desk. Nothing there. She checked the floor nearby. Then she looked at the boys' half of the room. You know, it's always the boys. Uh, it wasn't forbidden for girls to cross the aisle, but they usually did so only if the teacher asked them to. Sam, uh-oh, cute boy, Sam, saw her looking around and must have noticed her distressed expression. What's the matter? he asked. My penmanship paper, she said. I left it on my desk. Sam stared for a moment. Is that what the... He stopped shook his head. I think I might know where it is. He started up the aisle toward the middle of the room. Oh, he saw him take it. He saw him take it. He didn't know what it was, but there you go. 
Hannah followed and watched as he peered around the side of the stove toward the water bucket. He used the dipper to fish out a sodden piece of paper and held it up. <gasps> she gasped in dismay. It was indeed her penmanship work. Water streamed from the paper. Nearly every word had washed away. Her shock lasted only for a moment. He knew where to find it. And I would wager he knows who did it, too. Sam, what is the trouble here? Miss Walters was back at her desk. Um, <clears throat> there was a piece of paper in the bucket, miss. I'll go empty it and refill it because the water's got ink in it now. Sam picked up the bucket and quickly left to go to the well in the corner of the schoolyard. Hannah was still standing beside the stove. Hannah, is this any of your concern? Miss Walters asked. The paper was mine, miss. How did it get into the water bucket? I don't know, miss. Hannah took a breath. I could say that I think Sam knows, but it's not my place. Slowly she closed her mouth. You should take more care with your possessions, Miss Walter said sharply. Please return to your seat. Now we know someone took it and stuck it in the water because they were being horrible to her. We know this totally happened, but what are you going to do? She didn't see who did it. And Sam kind of knows who did it. But it's like going to be such a complicated thing. And remember, Sam's the one whose dad was the worst at the PTA meeting. Totally. Sam's dad was the one going, Nin Chinese people, Nin Chinaman, Nin 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 Nin. He was the one who was the, like just the awful, awful, awful perpendicular. So Sam's in a weird position. But I think Sam knows who did it. And Sam might, uh, maybe he'll go prairie justice on this one. We'll see. I think Sam's clever. I think there's going to be something clever here. I like him. Poor Hannah. In an instant, Hannah smoothed every sign of emotion out of her face. She walked back to her desk, sat down meekly, even though she was feeling the exact opposite of meek. She had learned at an early age to act one way while feeling another by watching Mama. Hannah had seen her mother in every kind of mood. In moments of anger or scorn or disappointment, Mama's face suddenly became a complete blank. No one else, not even Papa, could have guessed what Mama was thinking or feeling. Now, poker, poker face, there you go. Except for Hannah. She and Mama had never spoken about it, but Hannah had somehow absorbed the knowledge that there were times when it was useful, crucial, to hide her thoughts. Now her mind was in a jumble. She was dismayed by Miss Walter's admonition. At the same time, she was aware that it was unfair of her to expect anything different. Miss Walters had not heard her side of the story. Above all, she was alarmed because of what the episode might mean about her classmates. Mm-hmm. Mm, sorry. Mm -mm -mm. She did not want anyone to sense that alarm. It was a weakness they could use against her. Oh, yeah, she's like, they smell fear. I don't want them now. Maybe it was an accident. A bitter taste filled her mouth. She was angry at herself for thinking it, for having been put in the position of actually hoping someone had accidentally thrown her paper away. She knew it was no accident because Sam had said something about they. And because the other students returned, they brought that old cold, the cold fog of ill will into the room again. But right, what's she going to do? She's going to have to take on like the whole class. I guess she didn't want to do that, so it's scary. It took all Hannah's strength to apply herself to the afternoon grammar lessons. She and her classmates were standing at the front of the room, inverting the subjunctive in response to Miss Walter's prompts. Oh, that's, that's high-level grammar there. Invert your subjunctive. If we had gone to the store, we would have seen her there. Had we gone to the store, we would have seen her there. After each student had inverted three sentences, Miss Walters asked a final question. Who can invert the following? If I were you, I would choose a different color. Hannah lowered her gaze, not wanting the teacher to call on her. The less attention drawn to her, the better. None of the other students volunteered, and the silence lengthened into awkwardness. Remember, she'd already read the six readers, so she can do it. She's like ahead of all of them. Hannah? Mm -mm. She looked up to see Miss Walters raising her eyebrows expectantly. <clears throat> Hannah cleared her throat a little before answering. Were I you, 
I would choose a different color. Well done, Hannah. The students were stirring in surprise. Hannah cast a sidelong glance at the other girls just in time to see Dolly roll her eyes in disgust. Edith raised her hand. Yes, Edith, Miss Walter said. Were I you? Miss, that sounds so odd, Edith exclaimed. Miss Walter smiled. It is rather awkward, I agree. However, I assure you that it is grammatically correct. All of you will now return to your seats and compose five sentences on your slates using the were I you construction. Then you may begin your reading. Hannah made her way back down the aisle. Behind her, she heard Dolly whisper, show off. <laughs> Dolly Spinelli also. Yeah, she's Dolly Spinelli also. Would she have said that if I weren't half Chinese? Nah, she's just being mean to you. She's just being mean to you. I mean, Dolly's obviously terrible to everyone, but yeah, she's totally picking on you because you're half Chinese. How many times in her life had she wondered that? She always hoped that cruel remarks were, were misunderstandings, benign, forgotten in the next breath. Instead, they were most often birthed by thoughtlessness or ignorance, or at best, but at worst, by venom and malice. Why does it always bother me when people say things like that? What's the matter with me that I must always be doubting, not just them, but myself? She hated having such thoughts. At times, they circled in her mind until she was so confused and dizzy that she would give into tears. She held her breath, determined at all costs not to cry in school. Hastily, she scrawled her five grammar sentences so she could take out her reader. Time and again, reading had saved her from her own thoughts, and she prayed it would save her now. Sure enough, she was soon absorbed in Mr. Audubon's account of the passenger pigeon. He wrote of their vast numbers and described their flight with such vividness that she thrilled to his words. The image of the great mass of pigeons overhead was still in her mind's eye as she slowly closed the book. A few moments passed before she was conscious of her surroundings. She heard Miss Walters calling for books and slates to be gathered up. The school day had ended at last. Okay, so they were horrible, but worst thing they did. Okay, worst case scenario, they threw her paper in the water pocket. That's pretty awful, but at least they didn't beat her up. So, so far, so good. And she has a friend. She has a friend, Sam. Sam, child of the worst bigot in town, Sam likes her and is 100% on her side and totally knows that what's happening is bad and is trying to help. So we can hope that Sam, Sam will help. But, ew, ew. And she's very sensitive. She's a sensitive girl. She's very, you know, her ma, as she, she talks about, mama had figured out how to, like, just go la, 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 bullies. And, you know, not even care anymore. Just blow them off. Um, shake it off. Hate is gonna hate. Shake it off. Um, her mom had figured that out, but she, an older lady. Whereas, as Hannah's still quite young, and she's at the worst age. She's at that early teen, 13, 14 years old. What is it when, what, how is it that when we're 14, we literally believe the entire world is talking about us? We're just like, oh no, everyone, like, if you get, if you get, like, a, a pimple, everyone will see. No. No one in school has actually noticed your pimple because they are all busy in the bathroom looking at their own pimples. Nobody knows. But when you're, when you're 13, 14, you're absolutely convinced that everyone is staring at you and everyone is obsessing about your hair and your face and everything else when it's, they're much too busy thinking about themselves. And, and it takes years. So if at that point you have horrible bullies who are really are being mean to you, oh, it's not good. It's not good. It's I'm very unpleasant. I don't know. I um, I was sensitive when I was little. I did not care for for the bullying. It was it was very unpleasant. But by the time I got to be like junior high, well, of course, by then I was Nellie Olson. I got um, I got a bit tougher. I said, I well, I never thought. Well, I bet, I better, I better toughen up <laughs> if I'm gonna survive this one. And I did. I I I got a little uh tougher till by the time I was um, like, into junior high, high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. People just, people were, like, no longer starting stuff with me by high school. Um, but, yeah, we, it was always very difficult. It was very difficult. But, um, yeah, you, it's like you can't show, it's like dog smell fear. You can't. It's, like, terrible. Um, 
but yes, it's, and then the worst part is if you are the sweet, sensitive kid, you notice, you notice that they're being horrible. And, and of course, then they, they pick on you more and it's like, uh, 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 uh. but if you have a friend and that's the thing, even though, yeah, I got, I, oh, there were, people were awful and I hit their bullies at my school and they were just, they were horrible to everyone, but I was on the list apparently of people for them to be horrible to. Um, but that was the thing is that I wasn't the only person they were horrible to. And I did have There weren't friends. And there were other people that the bullies were hideous to, and we kind of like bonded <laughs> so that, um, you know, I wasn't alone. Yeah, compare notes. Um, so that, that helps. That helps a lot. So, but yeah, there's always, there's always somebody. Ugh, ugh, ugh. And I think they're meaner now. I think they do. excelled over the last few years in resourcefulness and creativity in their bullying. I guess it's progress. Um, on the other hand, ooh, um, yeah. Now to each other in junior high that like, what? nobody would have said that. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm so glad I'm not like 12 now because, oh, oh. Her slate pencil went missing. She opened her dinner pail to find that someone had half filled it with water. The biscuit disintegrated into slurry, the bit of salt pork sodden. Hannah caught a glimpse while the fourth reader students in front of her were snickering over it. Someone had drawn a crude, cruel caricature of her face. Buck tooth and with slurry. Oh, above the drawing. Oh no, and even worse. Above the drawing, a caption. Dirty Chinaman, exclamation point. Below it, the words, were I you, I would not come to. Her hurt was growing and with it, her anger. She could feel the rage swelling and getting hotter inside her. She had to stop it. They want me to lose my temper or try to get back. Yes, she's, that's exactly what they're doing to her. She would not give them that satisfaction. For the rest of the day, she kept her head down so as not to meet anyone's eyes, attended to her studies, made It was not over yet. Hannah hurried along 2nd Street as if it were possible to leave the unpleasantness behind her by getting home as quickly as she could. Approaching the alley behind the buildings on Main Street, she drew up short. One more time. Sam, the second voice, that was him. Hannah stayed where she was, hidden by the row of stables and haystacks that lined the alley. Sam emerged, dragging a the same age, but we're both in the fourth reader class and look so alike that Hannah could not tell them apart. What was Sam doing? Yay. Yay, Sam. He shouted. Tommy almost lost his balance, but caught himself and scrambled away. Sam hurled something after him. Whatever it was hit a hitching post and shattered. Sam watched until Tommy was out of sight, then continued on. to pick up one of the shards or whatever Sam had thrown. <gasps> it was a piece of a slate written on it, smeared, but still legible were the words, I, you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All Cap Garland, Dalmanzo, Pa Ingalls, Prairie Justice on him. Took him out in the alley. Gave him a whooping. Looks like busted up her, their little uh, slate. Friday. Never had Hannah so welcomed the end of the week. Only one more day to get through. 
It sounds like Laura when she was teaching at that awful school and staying with those awful people. It's like that. Bishop to celebrate the last day of the term. Those of you in the fifth reader class will be allowed to choose your own piece, Miss Miss Walters said. With my approval, please come to school on Monday prepared. So that we will not have pupils speaking the same piece. School is dismissed. Hannah had never recited a piece in front of an audience. <gasps> she could tell that only a few of the others. as part of the school routine. Hannah was both intrigued and daunted to stand alone before what would surely be most of the town and recite a piece of poetry or prose. <gasps> a single word out. I, I've been in show business for 52 years. And I still worry about that some days. Those Last pupil to leave the schoolroom. Most of the students were eager to go, heading out the door the moment they were released. If she took her time tidying her desk and taking up her books, the schoolyard was usually she bade her a friendly goodbye. On this day, Hannah found herself looking forward to the farewell for two reasons. Because it meant the end of a harrowing week, and because of its for what they looked like, and that included Hannah. Yeah, because it was normal. She just wanted normal, she just somebody to act normal. To Hannah's relief. Books that were stacked willy-nilly in the parlor of the rented house, she also made a quick visit to the shop site. She hadn't yet seen it. Other than going back and forth to school, she spent her days inside the rented house. Soon, she would begin to feel penned in and restless, but for now, school was adventure enough. And after all those weeks in the wagon, she relished staying in one place with a solid roof overhead, a cook stove, and a soft bed at night. That's what I like. A roof over my head, a cook stove, and a soft bed at night. Although I like a firm mattress, just saying. The rented house was on the corner of 2nd Street in Maine. The shop was on the east side of Main Street, down toward the livery. Hannah stood on the sidewalk in front of the lot and watched Papa hold the frame straight to the plumb line while Charlie Hart hammered away. A stocky, sturdy man in his thirties, Mr. Hart, had a claim north of town and a fiancé named Angela in Ohio. He was working to earn enough for a house to replace the sod hut he was living in now. He hoped to get back to Ohio after harvest, get married, and bring Angela out before true winter. Ginger-haired, with a beard to match, he was so fair-skinned that he was perpetually sunburned. Papa had said that he was a steady worker, expert carpentry skills. Better than mine, truth be told, Papa admitted. Hannah was impressed, because Papa was himself a fine carpenter. <sighs> Framing the front wall next, he said to her. Hannah glanced up and down the street. The shop fronts were structurally identical. Two windows with a door between them. She imagined customers coming into their brand new dress shop and felt a tingle of anticipation. Papa, have you already bought the door? He shook his head. Charlie's going to make it. Says it'll be better than a bought one. Why do you ask? Hoops, she answered. They're coming back in style and they're, they're too wide to go through an ordinary door. Women have to stop and tug at their skirts. It's a nuisance. Mr. Hart had stopped hammering and was listening. Ah, oh, I've seen ladies do that. I never thought about it before. It would be nice to have the only shop on the street where they could just sail right in, Anna said. Oh, she's smart. She is mm, she's a little marketing genius. Yep. Mr. Hart scratched his head under his head. I could do a double door, he said, and one window instead of two, but a bigger one. Hannah nodded. A big window would be nice for displays, she said. Dresses, she added silently. Oh, she's thinking ahead. 
Papa put his hands on his hips. So, the two of you have got that all decided, he said. Hannah held her breath as she glanced at him. Was he angry? He tossed the plumb line to Mr. Hart as he strode past her. Guess I'd better get to the lumber yard. Gonna need more wood for a double door. Hannah spent most of Saturday sorting through the shop supplies they had brought with them from Cheyenne. The button box, spools of thread, some reels of ribbon, hanks of embroidery floss, papers of needles and pins, assorted fasteners, boxes of dressmaker's chalk, a few skeins of knitting wool. One reel of plain red ribbon was almost spent. Hannah pulled off what was left, a little more than a hand span, probably around nine inches, but both ends were somewhat frayed and would have to be trimmed. Not enough for a neck ribbon, barely enough for a decorative bow. She trimmed the ends and rolled up the short length carefully and then set it aside. She'd figure out some way to use it. That day, she also accomplished something she'd been wanting to do for a while. The braid of prairie turnip had been hanging from a nail on the kitchen wall ever since they moved into the rented house. She still had that braid of prairie turnips? That was the one that like, the Indian ladies gave her when they came by and she made them soup and they gave her the little things that look like giant green onions and they said are prairie turnips. Mm, I guess they, they keep, huh? Mm. Oh, no, I'm crumbling her. <laughs> Mm. Bing cherries. Oh, those are good. Um, Bing cherries. Um, Jennifer's just talking about Bing cherries. Bing cherries, um, it's kind of cherry. I'm not sure quite what's the difference between, like, a Bing cherry and another, but there's many different species and brands of cherries, and Bing cherries, um, are quite, they're dark red, if I recall, quite tasty. Mm-mm. All right, so she's still got these prairie turnips. Good heavens, I guess they keep. The braided prairie turnip had hanging on the nail ever since they moved in. She snipped off half a dozen bulbs and put them to soak in a bowl of water. They'll be ready to cook on Tuesday. She's going to soak them three days. It was a small excitement, trying a food she'd never eaten before. She hoped she would like it, but even if she didn't, at least it would make that meal interesting. That's like me. It's like, what is this? I don't know. We've done, Bob and I have done that. We're like in the vegetable aisle and the fruit aisle going, I'm not totally sure what this is. Let's get one. <laughs> we like look it up and go, let's make it. See what happens. And yeah, it's great. We wind up discovering new stuff. On Sunday, she and Papa went to church services, which were held in the railway depot. They slipped inside just as the service began and left during the last hymn. It was Hannah's first time. The previous week, Papa had gone without her, sort of scoping the place out again. Well, some of the people seated at the back saw them come in. No one spoke to them. Hannah was discomfited by the stairs and the nudges, but she knew it was good that she had been seen attending to church. One less thing for people to hold against her. Oh, yeah, when he told them that, like, her mom, the, that Mama was a Christian woman and had been raised by missionaries and that, 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 they, that she was raised by a church lady and was completely, they were like, oh, 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 oh. like they, this hadn't occurred to them that a Chinese person born in America could possibly be going to their same church. Like, terrible. She reminded Papa to tithe, which Mama had always insisted on out of gratitude to the missionaries who had cared for her in China. That night, Hannah slept poorly, wondering what she would face in school the next day. The sheets felt scratchy. The quilt lay askew no matter how many times she tried to straighten it. She shifted and squirmed for at least half the night. Monday morning came too quickly. Boy, she's into these cliffhanger endings. Every time she gets to the end of the chapter, she goes like, da 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 da. <laughs> it's like, and then, no, da da da. Seriously, it's something terrible. Well, I'm just like, okay, so obviously, she she's um, gonna give her, you know, get a hard time here. But luckily, luckily, she does does have um, Miss Walters is on her side, and Sam is on her side, and the Justice of the Peace guy, Mr. Harris, is totally on her side. That's three. She's got the justice of the peace, the head of the, who is also the head of the school board, the school teacher, and the cutest boy in school. 100% on her side. Oh, also that little tiny girl, the little, like, Laura girl with the braids named Bess. She loves her. the little tiny girl. She was so totally sweet. So the only people so far, like, hate her are um, Dolly, 
who's evil and hates everyone, and um, Cute Boy Sam's evil dad, who um, who made it quite clear he also who did he also not like he didn't like Chinese people or um, or black people or Indians. So yes, he kind of hates everyone. Um, and then the, uh, a couple of the big boys who seem to enjoy bullying in general <laughs> and have decided that she looks like a good target. Oh, well, that's good with A and W. Um, so yeah, she she's pretty tough though. She's going I think she's gonna make it. She's gonna make it. She's she's like hanging in there. Um, but yes, it clearly the bullies are at it. But Sam just dragged that boy out behind the shops and busted up his slate and gave him what for. So that's good. So so they're having to rethink it that not everyone is with them. That there are people who are saying no, 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 stop that. Um, but it, it, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And they've seen her go to, I mean, she's doing everything right. I mean, she and her pa's like, she's going to school. She's going to church. They're opening a shop. It's like, la. So the only people who could possibly hate them are just like awful, awful, terrible idiots at this point. Um, but there's always idiots. So, um, so she's got Sam and she's got the teacher and she's got just the piece. So Hang in there, Hannah. Um, I'm enjoying this thing. I know, I'd have heard about this a while back, and it was actually um, Bob. My husband Bob said, hey, you heard about this Prairie Lotus book? I'm going, yeah, I heard about Prairie Lotus. It's the, the little Chinese girl. And so he goes, I think you should get it. I think we should get it. And um, he started reading about it, and he went, oh, no, this sounds really good. You should read it. Bob's, like, totally getting into this. I mean, yeah, he, I, don't think, I don't think he's read the Little House books. Um, he had, hadn't even watched the show until <laughs> After we were married he'd seen like two episodes and then like after we were married he's like i guess i should watch this thing um so he's like you know he, he he's a convert to little house in the Prairie. <laughs> but then he got into it and but he is loving this this thing with the readings and all the stuff i'm doing in line he's like yay yay what are you reading now what do you have for snack what do you and like on saturdays and sundays when he's here he like goes and gets he's like pouring the goldfish in a bowl and going do you have your son do you have a drink do you need more ice i mean he's like completely into it and he's like is the prairie lotus book good so, so yes, he's awesome and he is like so into this. It's hilarious. Um, so there you are. So I have things, things, things to do. Things are happening, things are coming up. So yeah, so my hair is shiny. Um, September 24th, um, we're doing the show in the other side of the room. And um more, and there'll be one in October, and there'll be one in December. Also, um, the brilliant Rich Little. Remember Rich Little? He was the team the guy who did the impressions of everyone yes yes and he is he is still around and still doing it he's in vegas in fact he was at the tropicana like all the time so of course right now he's going to do an online show the the rich little is going to do a stage at show like i've been doing ah and and i'm i'm, I'm helping i'm helping because he's a very nice man and we like him and we want him to do an online show because it's going to be awesome so things 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 are happening all over the place um stuff um so there you are so uh um i have a friend who's having a zoom party involving cheese plates so i have to go to the store and get stuff for the birthday cheese plate we're having like a cheese plate exhibition online thing. Um, so we said, do you get butterflies before? Uh, before I get rhinoceros before, but I have hippos running through my stomach before a performance. So yes, it did happens. It happens. Um, so I uh, keep it posted. Remember Nelly newsletter. If you um, email loose loose gravel prod at aol. Uh, somebody's probably going to put it up. Loose gravel prod at aol.com. And I want the Nelly newsletter. And people go, is this live? Yes, yes, he's live. He's live. He's living it. That's why he's going to do the internet show because the people go, Rich Little, Rich Little, wait, Rich Little's still working. Is Rich Little still working? Rich Little's still working. And he's going to be live in your living room in October. It's like mind blowing. Um, so, yes. I, oh, yes. And then Tuesday, Tuesday, the ERA show. So, Tuesday night, you know, I do my the Alice Arngram show and I'm going to have on attorney uh, Wendy Murphy and, yes, yes, Karen. Karen Grassley. Yes, our Karen, as in Ma Inkles. And it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be all about the Equal Rights Amendment and all kinds of like cool things. That you ah! You'll love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. So um, there it is. Loose Gravel Prod at AOL.com. Lisa just put it up. So if you email there and say, I want the Nelly newsletter, you will get the Nelly newsletter and then you'll know everything. You'll know everything that is happening. Not just me, you, I, the rest of the cast. I, I, anybody else from the show, I go, oh, and this is happening and that is happening. You'll hear all about them too. Oh, Rich Little was a judge in last year's Elvis competition in Mesquite, Nevada. See? There you go. Ta-da. So, 
I will see you tomorrow, uh, one thirty. Yeah, and um, wash your hands and wear your masks, and you be careful and take care of yourselves.